Hey everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. You people are killing me for not posting any new videos in this YouTube channel for last three weeks around. Well, I was very busy with my study work and also making some newer concepts about this YouTube channel. If you follow me on my community post, you have seen that I have posted about making a long video lectures. Well, that was a very good decision from me, but I was very disappointed about making these videos because uh, they took very long time to make and they were very long. I've already prepared some hepatic ultrasound lecture slides, which took around 800 plus slides that will take around three hours to just describe to you which is a very big time and no one will watch this video. Though it will be very beneficial if you compare with my other videos economically, but that will only be very helpful for most of the people. So we have segmented these videos and we'll post separately each and every topic. That will be helpful for you, I think, if you are a beginner or you are very expert. So today we are going to start with the hepatic ultrasound first lecture, that is the acute hepatitis. This is a very known case and you already know a lot about that. And I have tried to combine all the features and a lot of pictures from different books and different sites. I will put the reference on the description box below so you can check those websites and also the books those are very excellent books which will take a very long time to read but i have summarized those findings in this video without any further delay let's jump into the main lecture so today we are going to start with the acute hepatitis acute hepatitis is the acute inflammatory condition of the liver due to viral infection or toxic agents the patient will come to you with jaundice fever and right hypochondriac pain also may come with nausea and vomiting. In case of all acute inflammatory condition, always try to remember two things. There will be edema and hypermia. So we'll talk about edema right now. In a normal liver, if you want to do edema, you'll have to put some water inside. And when you are giving some extra volume, the liver size will increase. So there will be the hepatomegaly, and due to the presence of this anechoic fluid within an isoechoic liver parenchyma, the echogenicity of the parenchyma will decrease, making it hypoechoic. Due to this hypoechoic parenchymal echotexture, the portal venous wall will show bright echogenicity, making it looks like some stars within a dark sky. This pattern is known as the starry sky appearance. Now what will happen about the gallbladder? Due to adjacent edema, the gallbladder wall will be thickened. Now let's summarize these findings. So there will be hepatomegaly and diffuse hypoechoic hepatic parenchyma with periportal prominent echoes or periportal cuffing forming the starry sky appearance. There will be thick wall gallbladder which is very commonly seen in hepatitis A virus infection. In case of alcoholic hepatitis on color doppler you will get a high velocity flow in hepatic artery. The peak systolic velocity will be more than 100 cm per second. In case of acute or fulminant hepatotoxicity, there will be increased resistive index or RI of the hepatic artery on Doppler. Here's a picture you can see the liver looks quite normal, but if you compare the liver echogenicity with the adjacent kidney, there is a decreased echogenicity of the liver or an increased echogenicity of the renal parenchyma. To differentiate between the liver and renal disease, you may look at the patient the patient was having jaundice and if you look at the liver right now you can see a lot of portal venous walls are visualized which is not commonly seen this increase in portal venous wall reflection indicates the periportal cuffing or periportal prominent echoes or you may call it a starry sky appearance here is another picture you can see the starry sky appearance a lot of portal veins within the hepatic parenchyma Hey, you can see the renal parenchymal echogenicity is increased in comparison to the hepatic one and a lot of portal veins are visualized as tiny hyperechoic dots. Here again another picture you can see the left lobe of the liver shows periportal prominent echoes and on the right image I am not convinced this looks quite normal but when we compared the echogenicity with the adjacent kidney quite carefully in a magnified image you can see the hepatic parenchymal echogenicity looks quite decreased. So let's see this case in real time to avoid the confusion and you can see a lot of portal venous walls are seen forming starry sky appearance.
here is the kidney and you can see the hepatic parenchyma leukogenicity is slightly decreased in comparison to the renal parenchyma. In this case, the gallbladder wall was not thickened. Here again, you can see the liver parenchyma leukogenicity is decreased and a lot of portal venous walls forming the starry sky appearance. Here in this longitudinal oblique transabdominal ultrasound, in a case of acute alcoholic hepatitis, you can see the liver is enlarged. Without any measurement, looking at the longitudinal extension of the liver greater than the adjacent kidney, you can tell it a case of hepatomegaly. There is also a rounded contour which is also compatible with hepatomegaly. On the right image, you can see the anterooblique transabdominal ultrasound in the same patient with an elevated hepatic arterial peak systolic velocity of around 220 cm per second which is quite higher than the normal value. Here you can see the transverse section of the left lobe of the liver showing the liver parenchyma is slightly hypoecogenic in a case of acute fulminant hepatic failure from the acetaminophen toxicity. This patient showed a high peak systolic velocity along with a high resistive index of 0.89 in hepatic artery. Here is another view of the left lobe of the liver and you can see a lot of hyperechoic foci of the portal venous wall indicating the starry sky appearance. On the right image, you can see the longitudinal section of the gallbladder wall in a patient with acute hepatitis and the wall thickness is increased due to edematous change. Here you can see another picture of the liver and you can see the starry sky appearance. On the right image, you can see the edematous gallbladder wall in a patient with acute hepatitis. Here on the sagittal and transverse section of the left lobe of the liver showing the portal venous walls appear thickened echogenic indicating periportal cuffing. These are the pictures of the thick-walled edematous gallbladder with the wall showing the multilayered appearance with extensive hypoechoic pockets of edematous fluid. Here is again another picture. You can see the periportal cuffing. The portal venous walls are thickened and echogenic. The gallbladder wall was thickened and edematous and as an incidental finding there was cholelithiasis which may make confusion between the cholecystitis and hepatitis from this image. There is a case with a starry sky appearance and the liver parenchyma leukogenicity is decreased in comparison to the renal parenchyma. Here is the real-time evaluation and you can see the starry sky appearance. And the real-time scan of the periportal coughing indicating the starry sky appearance of acute hepatitis. Here you can see the left lobe of the liver with a lot of portal venous wall thickening and forming the starry sky appearance. The hepatic parenchymal ecogenicity is decreased in comparison to the right renal parenchymal ecogenicity. Here again the starry sky appearance, a lot of portal venous walls are visualized here. You can compare the renal parenchyma leukogenicity that looks almost same unless you magnify the image, it may be confusing. Here's again another picture, you can see almost it looks normal. There are a lot of portal venous walls here like other cases. And if you compare the renal parenchyma leukogenicity, there is a decreased leukogenicity of the liver here, indicating it as a case of acute hepatitis. Here you can see a lot of ecogenic foci indicating the starry sky appearance. Here is a picture showing the thick walled gallbladder in a case of acute hepatitis. The liver was enlarged. This patient also had the splenomegaly. In case of children, we commonly see splenomegaly in case of acute hepatitis. Here you can see the transabdominal ultrasound in a patient with acute alcoholic hepatitis. The increased ecogenicity of the liver with hepatomegaly may make confusion with hepatic steatosis. On the right image, you can see the transverse section showing lymphadenopathy adjacent to the portal vein in a patient with viral hepatitis. Sometimes you may get lymphadenopathy adjacent to the portal vein.
Thank you for watching this video. Hope it will help. If it helps, then please consider subscribing this YouTube channel. I'm passing some transitional period with my work and study right now. It will be very beneficial for me if you consider subscribing this YouTube channel. And obviously, I'll post a lot of different cases in near future, as I promised a few days ago, I think. Okay, I'll also try to start anomaly related topics along with these abdominal cases so that you can go with each and every one. Hope to see you on the next video. Have a nice day.